The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 7a. These verses are a word of hope to the exiles in Babylon. Isaiah 34 portrays God's vengeance on Edom, Israel's age-old enemy, which makes the path from Babylon to Zion safe for the exile's return. The desert itself will flow with water to give drink to the returning exiles. A reading from Isaiah. Say to those who are a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recomp recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from James chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 and 14 through 17. Faithful Christians do not show partiality to the rich and powerful of the world, especially at the expense of the poor and weak. Likewise, faith does not pay mere lip service to God's will. Instead, a living Christian faith expresses itself in acts of compassion and mercy for those in need. A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a person in dirty clothes comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that is promised to you, <clears throat> promised to those who love him, but you have dishonored the poor? Is it not they who blasphemy the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has, be, has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of sight and towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And Keith, if I could have you do one more thing. If you go to the soundboard and the very top of the soundboard above the channel that says pulpit, push the mute button so it's red, please. It'll be at the very top.
caveat here. Eventually. Cheryl, can I ask a question? Are you trying to make me louder in here or on the recording? All right, just wanted to make sure. I said eventually Jesus seems to include her. His first response to the woman didn't seem so welcoming or inclusive, did it? It sound, no, it didn't sound like, he called her a dog. What's going on here? Well, here's my take. Whenever you encounter something particularly of Jesus that doesn't fit right, and Jesus calling anyone a dog doesn't fit right to my understanding of who Jesus is, my experience of who Jesus is, so what's going on? Well, here's one take anyways. Jesus was speaking out of the, uh, the common everyday Jewish understanding okay, of that time period. And in that time period, the good news, God was for the Jews. That's the Jewish story. When we read Hebrew scripture, we're reading the Hebrew story. God, Yahweh, was the God of the Jews. Those other people had other gods. And the Messiah, Jesus, came from the Jews. Jesus is Jewish. And he came to the Jewish people. That's the background here, the context. But what we need to notice when we read scriptures, like stories like this one in particular, it's not the stuff that makes us go, ooh, that, 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 uh, that, that we need to focus on, but it's when Jesus surprises the audience. So in this instance, Jesus is going along just as expected. Everyone around him is saying, yeah, 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 we understand. This is how, Je this is how we work. We're Jewish people. We call the Gentiles dogs. And, and G God is for us and maybe for them later. And who but then comes the surprise. Jesus veers from the normal story and commends this woman for her faith and heals her child. It's the surprise moments that you and I need to look at, the surprise of the, the newness, the new thing that God is doing in and through Jesus that we need to focus on. And the new thing is that Jesus, that God, is for everyone and is including everyone. This is a, this is a way of reading scripture that, that you can see time and time again, it's particularly as we read the Old Testament, or the New Testament as we did this morning, where uh, the first century customs are really What's driving it? What's the surprise? That's the new thing that God is doing in Jesus. There's something similar going on in, in the story of the man at the Decapolis. Just like Jesus surprises everybody by including a woman who is a foreigner in the love of God, within the love of God, uh, Jesus does the same with this man in the Decapolis. He crosses a boundary. This man was considered to be unclean. Ceremoniously, religiously unclean. He had a disability. He couldn't hear. He couldn't speak. That's not someone a good, upright, religious person would be hanging out with in that point in time. But Jesus did. That's not someone you would even get close enough to touch. But did you hear the story? Jesus touched the man. Surprise. And again, surprise, Jesus included someone outside the boundaries of Israel, a foreigner within the love of God. Surprise. Are you with me now? Are you understanding a little bit more here? It didn't matter if you lived in Israel or not. It didn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile. It didn't matter what your ethnic or, or um, your heritage was, your ethnic background or heritage was. It didn't matter if you're male or female. No, what? Again, might not seem to be such a big deal for us today, but it mattered a lot back then. Because the love of God, the thinking was the love of God was reserved, so to speak, for Jewish people, for the children of Israel. It didn't include people who were not Jews. But 
like Jesus did. Surprise. No distinctions. Everyone's included. What Jesus was doing in both of these stories, and I love that they're side by side because there's you can compare and contrast them, but what Jesus is doing in both of these stories is widening the circle, widening his circle to include everyone, men and women, Jews and Gentiles, members of St. Andrew's Lutheran Church and those who are not members of St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. He expanded the circle to include everyone, no distinctions. The healing and wholeness and peace that the man and the woman in our reading experience is for everyone. And again, we got to hear the shock value, including you. Including you. Hear this. There is nothing that can separate you, even you, from the love of God in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that you've said that can exclude you. There's nothing that you've done that can exclude you. There's nothing you've thought that can exclude you. Only you can exclude you by turning your back to the, to the embrace of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Although, you're still in the embrace of Jesus Christ. Surprise. The love of God in Jesus is for everyone, including you. May that be the reason we're here today. May that be what we are gathering today to celebrate. May that be the reason why we are worshiping today. May that be something that you and I experience today. The love of God and Jesus Christ coming to you, even you, even me. And then, because there's always and then, <laughs> there's always a and then, or an and then, <laughs> May it mold us as followers of Jesus. May it mold us and guide us and direct us into how we conduct our lives. How we are living as though everyone's included. No exceptions, right? No distinctions. Because that's what Jesus taught us. And as his followers, that's what we too are to live. So the question is, how are you doing at that? <laughs> How are you doing at that? And I ask that because I don't think that we're all too different than the first century church. In the first century, a man by the name of James looked out over his congregation, his flock, and he was disturbed by what he saw. He saw people acting not like Jesus did, you know, where... Uh, where everybody's included, no exceptions, no distinctions, but they were acting very uh, exclusive. They weren't embracing everyone. They were acting as if some people were indeed better than other people. You know, I'm in the church, so of course I'm better than everyone. They were acting as if when they encountered a new person who wasn't part of the clan. As if, you know, I wonder whether they're good enough. I wonder whether they are worthy. I wonder whether they're worthy of our time. I wonder whether we're worthy of our love. I wonder whether they're worthy of our embrace. I wonder whether they're worthy of our acceptance. And this last one, I wonder whether they're worthy of our Jesus. James rebukes his people, saying, if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your congregation here, and at the same time someone with dirty, smelly clothes comes in, and you say to the one with the fancy clothes, oh, sit here, this is a really nice place to sit, oh, so glad that you're with us, uh, and you say to the one who's dirty and smelly, uh, you sit over there there, back there. Have you not made distinctions? Distinctions? 
So let's check ourselves, right? Let's check ourselves today and how we treat others. And if we need correction, let's hear this rebuke from James and take it to heart and amend our ways. Because it is good news that there is no distinction. Everyone's included in the love and grace and peace of Jesus, including you and me and everyone. So may that be our experience. And may it be the way we live. Because as we will now sing, in Christ there's no east or west, for all are one in Jesus. Let's stand and sing. It's number 650 if you want to follow along in the hymnal. <laughs> We join together to pray for the needs of the world. I'll end each petition with, Our hope is in you, O God. Please respond, O Lord, hear our prayer. God of grace and glory, for the church we pray. Uphold our bishops, pastors, deacons, and youth workers. Sustain all volunteers during these autumn months. Inspire our worship and teach us how to pray. Our hope is in you, O oh God. Creator of the stars of night, for the earth we pray. Lower global temperatures, provide a healthy harvest, protect the habitats of wild animals, and train us to care for your creation. Our hope is in you, O oh God. Mighty fortress, for the nations we pray. Protect the world from tyranny and violence. Guide our elected officials. Look with mercy on the people of Afghanistan. Lead our nation toward the right use of our military and bring all to peace. Our hope is in you, O God. Hope of the world. In this time of pervasive adversity, we pray. Preserve us from storms and wildfires. Be with those who are struggling to put their lives back together after Hurricane Ida and all the fires out west and here in Minnesota near Isabella. Protect us from terrorists and wean us from the ways of prejudice. Our hope is in you, O oh God. Rock of ages on this Labor Day weekend, we pray for laborers. Grant a just wage to the employed, and meaningful jobs to the unemployed and shape our society to honor all residents of our land. Our hope is in you, O oh God. O oh God of love, 
For those who are poor, we pray. Feed the hungry. House all without homes. Assist the powerless. And form us into habits of generosity. Our hope is in you, O God. Healer of our every ill, for those who are suffering, we pray. Heal those who have contracted COVID-19. Embrace those with mental illness. Open up opportunities for persons who are deaf. And hear our cries for those we name now before you, either out loud or silently in our hearts. Our hope is in you, O God. Eternal Father, strong to save for the grace shown to our ancestors in the faith, we praise you. For life at the end of time in your presence with all the saints, we pray. Our hope is in you, O God. Receive our prayers, O God, for the sake of our beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you worshiping at home, now is the time to, to take your bread. And you may eat it now as I speak these words. The body of Christ given for you. And then taking your wine or grape juice. Drink as I speak these words the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you in the sanctuary, first of all, I'd like to invite those who agreed to serve communion to come forward and get ready at this time. For those of you here, we will commune, obviously, in, in the space. Those of, we'll start with the center sections. Come down the center aisle. Uh, those of you who, uh, well, let me start over here again. You have the opportunity to take a piece of bread out of the tray as you hear the words the body of Christ given for you. Then you may eat it. And then you have the opportunity to take uh, a small glass of red wine or white grape juice. You'll hear the words the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you may drink that and place the empty glasses in the wooden bowls. After we've uh, communed the center section, the stations will move and uh, we'll commune the side sections. You may come down these angled aisles, same procedure, and go back by way of the window aisles. Continue now with communion.
invite you to stand for the blessing. And now may the blessing of God and the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and his truth and his life now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.